strength and our capacity to think. We have, a, have had a faith in government. We have had a huge faith in government. That government, you know, is for us, will take care of us, that people are watching out after us and all that, that Social Security will last and we'll be able to draw Social Security. And some are saying, I'm just glad I'm old enough that I'm probably, by the time it goes defunct, uh, you know, I, I, I'll be through it, I'll be done, I'll be in the grave. But, you know, we have to recognize that things change re rather rapidly. What if that would happen tomorrow? You know, there are things that can happen very, very quickly, as, as we've seen. So you have a faith in government. You have a, a faith in your elected officials, and yet we see things, again, being shaken severely. So we, And you think, well, we're free because my political party is in and the other one's out, or the other one's out and we're in. You know how that goes. But I would suggest to us that truly that our faith and our freedom is in Christ, and that is where it has to be, and that in, in freedom, in faith, it makes a world difference. So today, I'm going to try to make this a bit interactive, so you may be thinking about it. How has, or what about your faith, has given you a freedom? That's, that's kind of the question. How has your faith given you a freedom so that we might appreciate the freedoms that you have we might maybe understand some of the freedoms that other individuals have. And normally, we, we've had the microphones out, but they appear to have disappeared. But let's get them because I find out that I do this from time to time, and we videotape it, and people say, well, I can't hear what the, per the person is saying. And I try to repeat the question as often as I can. But let's think about it, about how that your faith has given you a freedom that you did not have before. Um, and let's think about different things along that line as they work feverishly to try to find those microphones and get them up and going. Uh, so does anybody have any thoughts along that line how their faith has given them a freedom that they didn't have before? Richard, head towards Jeanette because, Jeanette, how has your faith given you a freedom you didn't have before? The freedom not to be perfect, you know, um, Years back, if you weren't doing it exactly right, you had bupkis. You had nothing. You weren't going to make it. You weren't going to be in God's kingdom. You weren't, God didn't have nothing to do with you because you wasn't perfect. And so it has given me the freedom to be not perfect, to make mistakes. Because I was making them all the time. I was just pretending I wasn't. Good. Very good. Freedom not to be perfect. So you, um, it's changed your life a little bit then. Anybody else, any, how their faith has changed or given them freedom? Charles? Well, my, my problem was that <coughs> for many, many... Charles, you only have one problem? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Char Charles says my problem, and I'm thinking, Charles, you're a man of one problem. Okay, go ahead. No, sorry. Well, I, I viewed it that way because I thought that everybody was perfect, and then one day... I don't know how long ago, but I realized that I was not perfect. And nobody else was perfect. The only person who was perfect was the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because the things he did for us. But uh, that was my view uh, a lot of times, thinking that, well, I am perfect. And then I realized, no, you're not perfect. You're, yeah, yeah you're just so, so piggybacking on what Jeanette said, you're not perfect. Anybody else? Matt, you surely have got a comment, I would think, about how your faith has given you freedom. we got two of those things. There you go. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, well, that was, as you mentioned, a paranoia. That was a time in my life when the least little thing would occur on a negative side. It was total paranoia with me. I developed a way to fake it with my friends and relatives. But now that paranoia has subsided because I have faith in Jesus Christ and Him only. And I have the freedom of knowing that I can go to Him and discuss with him openly, candidly, honestly about anything that troubles me or anything 
that I have done in my lifetime. You know, because you're a converted Christian doesn't mean you can't go back and look in the past just a little bit. And that's been very troubling, but now I have the freedom in Christ. So, so far, kind of, uh, I'm hearing that you have, your faith has given you you freedom to be a human being, to live. Gisette, did you have a comment? Uh, Yes. um, The freedom of choosing the kind of life that I want, um, my faith, I can see good and bad. And I can choose to do what I want to do. And, um, you know, I can have the kind of life that I want to have, the kind of life that I want to live. And, of course, is serving the Lord, the Lord and doing good. Yeah, uh, free, free to serve. See, this is a valid point about faith and freedom, is that when we become paranoid and we, we are not trusting God for what God has said, we freeze up. You really can't do very much of anything. I was, you know, I mentioned to you recently about taking my grandchildren out on the lake on a houseboat. Well, I have a certain fear of water simply because I have almost drowned three times. So it brings back a few memories. And then I, I do not like to not know what I'm doing. And I hate being out of control, you know. I want to know that I've just got this all in control. Well, all of those things came into convergence at one time. And life was not a lot of fun. And and I say, it wasn't as much fun as it could have been or should have been because I found myself a slave, as it were, to my own fears and and lacking faith. Now, if I'd had the faith of Jesus, you'd think about, well, okay, we've got a little problem with the houseboat. I'll just walk over to the shore. And, you know, take care of it as Jesus walked in the water. But I realize that's not the way it works in my life at this time. Anyway, well, what I want to do today is I want to go through a chapter, a section of a chapter in the book of Galatians that I think will help us to understand the kind of freedom that faith can help us with. The Apostle Paul is is writing to the church there at Galatia. And they're caught between, in a quandary between law and grace. And should I do this? And if I do, then I'm feeling guilty, I'm feeling shame, I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I belong. It's really important that we understand the grace of God and the freedom that we have in trusting God for who He is. Now, take for example, we'll just ask ourselves some questions. Has your faith in Christ affected your freedom in terms of your thinking, in terms of sin, salvation, redemption, relationship? Has it affected that freedom? The freedom to live, uh, to be who you are in Christ Jesus. I think it has greatly, but to have faith in God and what He's doing. But I'm going to start here in verse 7 of Galatians 3. It says... Paul saying, writing to the Galatians, says, Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. Now, I'm looking out over this congregation, and I'm seeing that it's just you and me, Dave. Just you and me in this congregation today. Because I'm thinking Abraham, you know, he he's, has children that comes down to Jews and all of that. And most of you are not looking like Jews to me. You're not looking like the children of Abraham. But notice here to to trust that you can be called something, quote, that you're not by outward appearance only. But he says here, again reminding us all of that, that we are children of Abraham because we believe. Worldwide Church of God in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto are located in the San Francisco Bay Area, regarded as the most prosperous region in the United States. We believe Jesus Christ when he proclaimed in Matthew 6.24 that serving God is more important than serving mammon. We welcome everyone to come and worship and fellowship every Saturday at the times listed on your screen and on our website, worldwidechurchofgod.com.